Well, the focus of trade unions and politicians now is to try and do what they can to preserve as much of the existing workforce as possible. The Scottish Government will, of course, work with the partners, with the owners uh, of Grangemouth, Petronios, to see what we can do collectively uh, in relation to ensure that there's a sustainable future for Grangemouth. Um, now, it's, f it's important to say that, uh, uh, of course, uh, there is no definitive in terms of what the future uh, is going to look like uh, for Grangemouth, but we're prepared to work with partners, including, of course, trade unions, to do what we can to ensure that jobs are protected. Well, to reflect on today's shock news, we're now joined from Edinburgh by the Green MSP for Central Scotland, Gillian Mackay. And here in the studio is the business commentator, Maurice Smith. And thank you both very much indeed for joining us. Um, Gillian, you're from the area. I suppose we can't underestimate um, the impact this closure is going to have on the area. Absolutely, and I think that's reflected in much of what we've heard from the community and from the workforce today, is that mm. level of, of shock. We're obviously operating in a relatively uh, low level of information as well. We know what the end goal is from, from INEOS, but the, the path to get there is unclear um, at the moment. And certainly we're looking for more information from the, from the operators of the site to give both the workers and the community some certainty over what's to come. Angela, and the people that you've spoken, today, to, spoken to today, I mean, can they understand why this has happened? I think the shock and the suddenness of the announcement is something that's really baffling um, the local community and the and the workers as well. There has been no trailing of this. There's been very little engagement with the community um, and with the workers as, as far as we can tell. There was obviously work going on around a just transition um, plan for Grangemouth and we need to make sure that that gets back on track to give workers um, the ability to develop an industry for Grangemouth that is sustainable and will be there for generations to come. Uh, Michael, uh, um, Morris, rather, can you understand why Ennis have done this? Uh, well, the short term answer is that the refinery is quite old and uh, has lost money in the last couple of years. So um, Petro Ineos is a joint venture between Ineos and the Chinese uh, state or one of the Chinese state energy companies, um, they have um, large refineries elsewhere in the world which are making money and are much larger. Um, so I can see that. Uh, obviously, Grangemouth as a whole, and Grangemouth includes Ineos's petrochemical works, um, is a major strategic asset to the Scottish economy, but it's less of a strategic asset uh, when you look at things in a, in a more global perspective. Well, how important is it to the Scottish economy? Well, it's quite important in the sense that it contributes uh, nearly 5% of Scottish GDP. I think in Ineos is uh, still the largest private sector employer in, um, in Scotland. And because of the nature of what it does, it's, it's of great importance because most of the petrol and diesel that we get in our service stations, most of the aviation fuel that uh, is uh, supplied at airports in Scotland comes from or comes through Grangemouth. So it's, it's a major asset and it has been for a century. Gillian, 500 people are employed at the refinery. How many of those jobs do you think are at risk? From having spoken to some of the unions today, we fear there are several hundred jobs um, at risk. Obviously, part of um, my job and many of the other MSPs who have, who have raised concerns today is now to protect as many jobs as we possibly can. That's why I'm calling on the Scottish Government to show leadership, convene an urgent summit and bring the operators of the site, unions, workers and crucially the community as well around the table to give some certainty for everyone as to what the future looks like. I mean, what power powers do trade unions and indeed the Scottish Government have in situations like this, Morris? Um, well, they don't have a lot of power, but they have quite considerable influence. One thing that struck me is, although Ineos presented this as a fait accompli uh, today, their details are, are quite thin, so that would suggest to me that the proposal is still quite tentative. They haven't really said uh, how this is going to happen and over what period of time beyond saying that refining work should end in 2025. Um, and so they've left a few doors open there. 
Um, it's very important from a Scottish Government point of view and for different reasons the UK Government that um, governments get quite close to companies like Ineos because it is a strategic asset. Ineos are a very important company and an important employer and they are talking about just transition and uh, you know, p possible new investment in the petrochemical complex as well as in uh, the other areas at uh, Grangemouth. And so it's very important that the governments move forward in some kind of partnership with the unions and the company. I mean, Julian, are you surprised that this wasn't kind of flagged up earlier? As I said, you know, it really has come out of the blue, hasn't it? It absolutely has. Um, my office earlier today made contact with some of the unions and some of the union officials we spoke to weren't even aware of, of what was going on. So it very much has come out of the blue for workers and for for the community as well. There are a mix of um, views across the communities as to what this means, what's coming next and actually um, what is behind um, this announcement itself. Is it a a serious announcement or are there going to be more things that come out in the wash over the next um, couple of days and actually I hope that Sir Jim Ratcliffe will come down and speak to the workforce who are rightly very anxious about what the future is for their jobs. And Gillian, you've you know, you're a green MSP, you've never been a fan of oil, refi oil refineries, uh, you want to move away from the use of oil, do you have mixed feelings about this? My feelings on this are with the community I grew up in, I grew up several hundred metres from the boundary of Ineos. I know the importance of of this um, asset to not just um, Grangemouth, but to the wider um, Falkirk area too. We do need to move away from oil and gas, but the whole point is a just transition. We have to take the workers with us. These are some of the most highly skilled workers anywhere in the country. They deserve so much better than this. They deserve well-paid, good terms and conditions jobs with good pensions for years to come. And that's been pulled, the rug's been pulled out from under that with the announcement today. Uh, and Morris, does any of this have any implications for the country's oil security? I, I don't think so. I, I mean, in the, in the UK, there are five other refineries. Um, so I think oil security, there's been a lot said about oil security and energy security, partly because of Rishi Sunak's um, recent pronouncements. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's, the, the waters are muddied there. Okay. What, what I should say is that just transition is going to mean a All lot right. more decisions like okay. this. Okay, more of that to come. Thank you both for joining us this evening.